Hello and welcome to the final video of a four-part series for the FIGS, or Fonts, Images, Gravity, and Sound projects, where we're learning how to import custom images like Mario in the background and the platform, and sound effects like our jump sound using the function preload. In this final video, we're going to get into importing custom fonts, as well as actually reviewing how to create a splash screen or a welcome screen when your game actually begins. So, let's actually start by importing our Mario font. All we're going to do is we're going to start by making a variable for our font. So I'm going to call it Mario font with the capital F. I'm doing this in the global section of my program underneath my multimedia section. Let's go ahead and scroll down to function preload because we have to associate that with our actual imported font. So I'm going to open up my files menu so I can see how my font is spelled. We're going to say Mario font equals load font and the name of our font in single quotations is smb font.ttf. Just like before, the spelling punctuation is crucial in order for it to work. Now, what we want to do is we actually want to create a splash screen to place our font and type our instructions for the game for this assignment. Let's go ahead and above my function game, I'm actually going to make a new function called splash. So I'm just going to add my little dividers, type in function splash, and let's open and close it immediately. Now I want to use the same background of our image so I'm actually just going to copy this whole appearance of game code from my function game to my function splash. That should import the Mario background. Let's go ahead and enter the title. So to do this, let's import our font. So we're going to say text font. And in parentheses, we're going to put Mario font, which is the name of the font that we've imported, or the variable name. Let's set our fill to be, uh, let's do white. Let's set our stroke. Actually, let's leave the stroke alone. So, uh, no, let's set our stroke to be black. We'll make it look retro. Let's set our stroke weight to be, let's say, 10. And let's set our text size to be 100. Now, let's just go ahead and place the title of this project. So text figs width divided by 2 for the x, 150 for the y, and let's press play. Now, when we press play, we still don't see our splash screen. And that's because we haven't actually told the splash screen function to run. If we scroll up into our draw, we have that if stage is equal to zero, we should run our game. We're gonna change that to if stage is equal to one, run the game. And I'm gonna copy this code and say that if stage is equal to zero, run our splash function. And again, this is in function draw. So if stage is equal to zero, splash, if stage is equal to one, game. Since we set stage to be zero in global, we should now see our splash screen. And there it is with our figs title using the classic Mario font. Let's go ahead and add our name underneath this. So I'm just gonna make the text size a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna drop in the author name. along with when we're taking the course. And for my width or my x, I'm just gonna do width divided by two. And for my y, let's just move it down to 200 and see what that looks like. There we go. Now the last part of our splash screen is we wanna add our instructions. So I'm just gonna make a new section here to keep myself organized. Let's just borrow this text box here. And 
then let's say how to play. And the only thing I need to do, I'm going to leave my X the same because everything is aligned to the center because we did text align in our setup. So the X is going to be width divided by 2 for all of them. All I need to change is my Y. So let's move this down to 250, how to play. I'm going to copy this code two more times. Use arrow keys to move left and right. Let's set that to be to, oh, let's just do 300. Press A to jump. Let's do 350. Let's press play, see what that looks like. You know, I actually want to separate these a little bit more. So I'm going to adjust my Y. And you can obviously customize this as you want. I'm going to move my title up. And I'm going to move this down just to separate my instructions a little more. Let's see if that looks good. And then I'll read out my numbers here. That looks a little bit better. So my title is at 120. My author row is at 180. My how to play is at 270. My use arrow keys is at 330. And my press A to jump is at 380. All for Y. The last one, or the last line we need to add, is our click the screen to start. Telling our user how to actually start our game. And let's put that at 400. Oh, I'm sorry, let's do 450. Let's see what that looks like. You know what? I'm actually going to move it down into the ground. Let's try 490. That looks good. Now, when we actually click the screen, it doesn't do anything. So that's the very last step of this program. What we need to do is we have to say if the mouse is clicked, we have to change our stage from 0 to 1. And that's actually going to go into our draw program. So if mouse is pressed, capital I, capital P, equals equals true, stage equals one. Don't forget to close your if statement. And now when you press play, you should see your splash screen. And when you click on the screen, you should begin your game. Let's try that out. And there we go. Don't forget to press save. In the next part, you may have noticed that there's additional media that we haven't used yet, like power-ups, Goombas, and coins. In the next part of the FIG project, we're actually going to place coins in order to gain points. We're going to place power-ups to change Mario's size. We're going to learn how to import background music. And we're going to learn how to actually work with uh, a bad guy, like, for example, the Goomba that you have to avoid or else you'll lose lives. This is all gonna come in the next video part series as we continue to learn how to program an existing platform style game.